Hello and welcome to this video, which is a request from Toby Hounsham, keyboard player in uh, Mungo Joe's band. And at the moment he is trying to work on something on a Sunday. So this is just a quick video for him, but hopefully other people will find it useful as well. So this is about using tempo detection in Cubase. So what I've got is a drum machine recording. So Toby sent me this. So this is his analog drum machine. And I'm just going to play you just a second of it. And we can hear that obviously with the click turned on, we are miles off on tempo. So we're just going to look at how you would detect tempo, how you can do this pretty quickly. So first things first, this works best with something where the beats are clear, which as you can see is in this drum beat. Uh, I often find with some drummers just doing this off the bass drum track works pretty well. So actually Bob, who is uh, Mungo Jerry's uh, drummer, if you just if I do this on the bass drum on his tracks, this works really well as well. And it means... The whole song is then mapped out tempo wise so then there's a whole load of editing which becomes a lot easier so first things first to make this nice clear just going to zoom in on this beginning and when you're doing this if you're working with a drum machine because they're pretty repeatable you can be really really accurate with this and doing this for this first manual stage which i'm going to show you is important so i'm just going to turn snap off grab the scissors and then cut this just at this point where that sample goes negative because that's how that bass drum starts delete that, turn snap back on, and then move it across. So it starts at bar one, beat one. Okay, we're going to look at two ways you can do this. So the first one is using the time warp tool, which uh, allows you to create a tempo map by dragging bars around. So in this case, we can see now when we start, bar one, beat one of drums and cue bass are pretty much in time but it soon goes out, okay? So what we need is bar two, which is here, to be here. So I'm just gonna zoom in on that. And then grab the time warp tool and hold down the shift key as you do it. But with the time warp tool, you don't grab in the ruler, you grab on the project window. So anywhere here, you can see it's snapping to that point. I'm holding down shift, so then the tempo will be the same throughout rather than creating a new one. And then getting it to that point there. And then I'm gonna click up there to move to that position and then I'm really accurately going to do this to get it as close as possible so again holding down shift just moving that to that point and now we have a tempo of 126.055 which is pretty close so if you've got something which is going to keep time well i.e not a human then that will probably be okay but after a while it drifts off and it's not perfectly in time all the way through, but there is actually an automated way to do this. So I'm just going to undo what I've just done. So just make it. So now we're back at the default tempo and we've actually got tempo detection in Cubase, but it's a little bit quirky. So you click on the audio in question and then go to tempo detection under project. So here this window appears so we can see the file that it's, it's working on. And if you click analyze, you'll notice we suddenly get a whole load of tempos appear and things sort of work, but they kind of don't as well. So I'm just going to make that tempo and time signature track just move out of the way. So we've got time signature in there and you can see it's changed it to one four, which is a bit weird. So we're going to multiply by two. So, but you can see at the moment we're in uh, one four, which isn't ideal. So then go back to the arrow tool in my case. Uh, we don't need to do any more tempo detection. So then I'm just going to change the signature by double clicking there, change it to 4.4. Four, and now we're nicely in time. And you can see down the bottom of the screen, the tempo is changing with every beat because it's actually detecting the, the sort of groove of the drum machine. So often things will go off in the middle of a beat, etc., or bar. And if we look at the tempo track, which is command T or control T depending on what you're on we can see these little variations in there and they're only, they're only tiny uh, at the end it normally goes crazy and the beginning it will often go crazy so you might find you need to put in an extra bar here and there or just ignore what happens at the end or do it manually but you can see those small variations if I zoom in change the scaling so you can see it's changing and it's it's you know reasonably repeatable but if you've got something which is an analog machine it will probably drift a little bit anyway and that's what you want. But now Cubase will follow the tempo of it exactly. So any of the editing you do, if you do some uh, MIDI in, let's say, bar one, 
and then move it across to bar two or bar three or wherever when the tempo is slightly different, it will fit with that really well and you'll just do it automatically. So this is the reason why I map things, even on live recordings, because it just means my grid is where it needs to be. And although I'm not quantizing everything to death because then it just doesn't sound uh, groovy and realistic, it gives you a really nice marker to be able to get everyone's feel right. So, you know, when everyone's drifting or maybe somebody's playing out, often it's me, um, then you can just move them to the right place, but you know where the beat is and Cubase is lining up. So it just makes all that editing easier, even if you're only using it as a kind of ruler to work to rather than just quantizing everything absolutely flat. So I hope that's been useful and I will see you soon.